Thousands of people fall for cyber scams every day, and many are afraid to admit it happened to them. But we found one group brave enough to tell their stories. Our parents. They learned the hard way so you don't have to. This is Mom Don't Click That. I'm here with Tom and Nancy. Um, Tom, why don't you tell us about your uh, position? What do you do? I'm Nancy's little boy. Um, I'm the chief learning officer at MediaPro or cybersecurity and privacy education company. I've been there for 13 years and have worked with hundreds of companies who educate their employees about how to look out for scams, uh, especially workplace related scams. And Nancy, um, tell us about yourself. I was a school teacher for 30 years. I was a private pilot uh, and a flight instructor. I was a massage therapist. I've done a lot of things in my life. <laughs> you have, that's incredible. Why don't you set the scene for us? What was happening? Where, where did this come from? I um, left my home on Whidbey Island due to unfortunate circumstances. And I was living in the townhome of a friend who was out of town and they were going to be returning and I was eager to get a place to live. You were online looking for a place? I was. Okay. When was, was the last time you were looking for a place online? Is this something you do Never. a lot? <laughs> <laughs> I happened to go to something called Turbo Tenant and okay. I saw uh, a house and I was able to walk by it and look at it and go behind it. And it looked cute. It looked very cute. It looked perfect. Um, what happened then? You know, you have to keep in mind, I was in a real emotionally vulnerable position. I had okay. left a beautiful home that I loved more than anything in the world. Gardens, uh, friends, neighborhood, etc. And I am in a, in a town home where somebody is going to be coming back fairly soon and I've got to find a place to live. When I walked around it maybe the second day or the third day, there was a sign out in front of the house made on a piece of tag board that said, this house is not for rent, no trespassing. So Tom, um, is, this, is the world of rental properties online already a known issue for you? Is this something you've heard a lot about? No, actually it wasn't. Both of you, both Nancy, you and also your security expert son who's going to help you through this process are in unfamiliar territory. Yep. The man's name that I was communicating with was Hope Cruson. We were emailing back and forth and I also had his phone number. So I was able to talk with him on the phone. If you started in this turbo tenant app, usually those, those sites mediate your experience through the app. Why, why did you suddenly jump out into direct conversation with this guy? I have no idea how those things work, Tom. With Airbnb, they'll say, don't talk outside of the right. app because they're right. worried about stuff like this. But on rentals, I think it's probably also normal just to have a phone number in front of a house. Yeah, there was nothing that seemed unusual about that to me. I appreciated being able to talk with him directly. Of and, course, yeah. And, um, and so he wanted me to send him a $2,000 deposit. He said, you could send it through Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, and Hope is trying to get me to do this really quickly. And I'm to do it from my bank to his wife's telephone number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did send him the $2,000. Then the contract was going to say, I want $2,000 security deposit and another $2,000 for the first month of rent. Right. Wrote him back and said, I've decided it's not big enough for me. I figured that was a good enough excuse. Uh, and I would like my $2,000 back. And from then on, I never heard a word. The thing that strikes me, I was expecting there to be more obvious red flags. And so far, almost everything you did is in line with how actually renting an apartment works. Well, they, they're looking for vulnerable people. Is, is this person, do you think, like fake renting a lot of units? I, I this... think so. Yeah, the, the research that I've done since then um, is they, they're looking at units that are for rent, asking them to establish a contact outside of the app. This is just a honeypot, what, you know, what we call a honeypot to, to grab people right. uh, who are looking for a, a rental and may be vulnerable. I mean, when I got this apartment, I ran out of a haircut because my wife texted me, we needed to sign the lease that day, like right that <laughs> minute or we'd lose it. Look, none of this program is about making people feel bad. This is about 
showing how uh, normal it is and how it happens to so yeah. many people. We got scammed. I mean, what can I say? It happens. It happens. I mean, everyone who's signing leases feels stressed, feels emotional. You're looking for a house. What could be more emotional than I need a place to live? It, there, there were several checkpoints where we thought, well, this is a little unusual, but okay. And I think that's, that was the, the primrose path. Their yeah. whole livelihood depends on talking you around the red flags. Their whole goal <laughs> is to get you to turn off that part of you that is skeptical. Do you have a, Nancy, do you have a wonderful place now? Did this work out afterwards? I am building a home on Whidbey Island and it's all working out really well.